Hi there, welcome to another episode of Unleashing Brilliance. Today, I want to talk about why your business isn't succeeding. You see, right now, I think there's a dark cloud hanging over business. It's like a plague of sorts that's currently halting business growth and stopping business growth in its tracks. Some people are blaming this unsure political environment, the economic uncertainty, the cost of living, etc., and saying that that's stopping people making commitments, stopping people saying yes, it may be the market's not right right now. Others are blaming specific individuals. Client X isn't doing Y, team member Z isn't pulling their weight. And I also see others blaming themselves, either out of fear, maybe it's a lack of direction, a lack of confidence. The reality is there's many reasons that could explain a lack of business success, but there's one that I see all the time that will absolutely lead to your business failure. And this one thing is inaction. There is nothing worse than inaction. In fact, it's literally a business killer. You see, there are many, including your competitors right now, that are waiting around for something to happen, something to change. They're waiting to be rescued. And instead of seizing that opportunity, instead of doing something different right now, they're waiting. So this is why I think right now is a great opportunity to find new business, to try new things, to experiment. I think right now is the time to do the work, to double down. Now is the time to be seen, to be heard, to be available for business, not to be hiding. So what can you do right now? Well, I want to share with you four things that I've been talking to my clients about this week and really encourage you to get curious about which of these you can put into your business right now. So first up, now you've heard me say this so many times, Positioning, positioning, positioning. If there is one thing that your business needs right now, your business success hinges on your ability to position yourself above the competition, ahead of the competition. And so this has to become a critical part of your daily strategy for your business. Who cares if it looks like nobody's, uh, nobody's actually listening? Who cares? If, um, if it looks like no one's responding, you know, the, the fact is whatever you're putting out there, whatever you are posting out there is reinforcing to the market what it is that you do, what it is that you stand for and who it is that you help. So make sure you're positioning links to your IP and keep it up. Increase the consistency and the frequency of you sharing what it is that you do out there in the marketplace because positioning always matters. And in times that are difficult, your positioning, you have to be seen and you have to be heard. So number one, positioning, positioning, positioning. Second thing, nurture always. You already have people that love your work, whether on LinkedIn, Instagram, your mailing list, they may be uh, clients that you've worked with before, they may be your existing clients right now. And I want you to imagine that you're having a conversation with some of these people one-on-one. What would you say to them right now? And an added tip here, don't overcomplicate your call to action. If the market is overwhelmed in all your communication, it's important that you make it really simple for them to take the next step. I want you to think about what your clients are saying right now. What is their problem that they are facing? What is what is the help that they need from you right now that you know you can give them and give them that thing? So nurture always. Think about your clients. Think about those that love you and have a conversation with them and give them the thing that they need right now. Help them. Help make their life easier. The third thing I want you to think about is a link to this nurturing always, but it's more about networking with intent. I've written two bestsellers on this, right? I've written two bestsellers on the opportunity and the power that exists when we strategically network and we network with intent. And yet what I see when business is tough is people tend to get overwhelmed. I see people worrying and and sitting in this place of being afraid and fearful in their business. They almost want to run and hide and they quit reaching out. They quit asking for help, hoping that someone's going to swoop in and rescue them. But trust me, 
People who want to work with you, they are out there. They just haven't seen you yet. Or maybe they're also so overwhelmed, they're not even thinking of you. You're not in their important people list. Or they may not have met you right now. So too many businesses are are waiting for customers to come to them. Instead of being proactive, instead of being intentional, it's about being intentional and not passive. It's about engaging and quitting being silent. And it's about adding values, but adding value always. It's not about being a transactional order taker. What I'm talking about here is I want you to think about being a transformational relationship creator. It's about connecting with people, having an outreach strategy. And instead of waiting for people to come to you, instead of waiting for the market to turn and suddenly your phone to stop ringing, this is about you proactively and intentionally reaching out and connecting with other people. Now, this isn't about becoming all hustle-like and going into sales mode all the time. I had this conversation with my clients this week where I want you to change your thinking from selling to connecting. I want you to change your thinking from chasing and hustling for that next deal to one of, I'm curious about how you're doing. And I want you to change this fear of getting the deal, this almost like drive of getting the sale to one of surrendering to the connection. Because when we connect with intent, when we connect from a place of adding value, when we connect lightly, That is where the opportunity opens up. So here's what I want you to do. Think about if you reached out to two people every single day, every single day of the week and every single week of the month, that's two people a day, that's 10 people a week, that's 40 people a month. If you reached out to them, that's 40 possible connections where you are reaching out with the intention of connection versus the intention of selling, I absolutely know that you will get people responding back. People will say thank you. People will check in. People will be reminded about what it is that you do. Now, often what happens in this space, people say to me, well, what am I reaching out with? I want you to consider this light touch strategy that I've talked about many times. You can search on my website, janinegarner.com.au and find blogs that I've written about light touch networking. I've done training on this stuff. This is where um, I say to people, put 10 minutes aside every single day. You're connecting and reaching out to two minutes, two people in those 10 minutes, and you are light touch networking. You are sending something that you may have previously written or read or that someone else has written that you think will be of interest to them. You may be simply reaching out and saying, hi, I've been thinking about you. How are you doing? You may be reaching out and saying thank you for some previous business. It may be you've got a podcast to share. It may be something that you've noticed in the marketplace that you want to bring to their attention. It may simply be an update of what you're doing, or it could be you connecting them in with something else. There is no expectation of anything in return. You are not hustling for business. You are connecting with intent. Two people every single day within 10 minutes, that's 10 people a week, that's 40 people a month. Give it a go because it really is a numbers game and I want you to get into this habit of being seen, being available and creating the opportunity for people to respond to you and to reach out to you. Fundamentally, it's about stopping hiding. And finally, number four, it's about doubling down on your expertise. You've already done the hard work. You've achieved so much. And now is the time to trust that and let that brilliance shine through. Block out the negativity, quit those doubting thoughts, and fill your first hour with inspiration. We've got to trick our mind into thinking positively versus our mind buying into the fear mongering that's going on right now. We want to start the day feeling positive. We want to start the day knowing that there is opportunity out there versus starting the day from a place of darkness, from a place of fear, from a place of, oh, this is too hard. So the way that I do it is when I start feeling challenged from a mindset perspective, I think about the stuff that is bringing me down. 
Yes, it's TV. Yes, it could be certain podcasts. Yes, it's scrolling on social media. Yes, it could be stuff I'm reading. Yes, it could be for people that I'm following that instead of making me feel energized and positive about the world and the day ahead of me, I start going into the world feeling a little bit grumpy. So instead of that, Think about that first hour of the morning as being a morning of inspiration. Listen to the awesome podcast. Connect with someone that inspires you. Read a book that's been stuck on that to read list. Like change what it is that you're reading. And here's the thing. What we want to do is we want to make it matter. So once you've finished that hour of positive, inspiring improvement and learning, instead of like, brilliant, done, tick off, I'm rushing off to my day. Take a further 10 minutes to write down what it is that you've learned, the impact that that bit of inspiration has had in you, and think about how you could do something with it today. What are you going to do with that hour of inspiration so that it changes and adds positivity into your day? And really allow yourself to connect with those ideas so that you can see the brilliance that you are bringing to your clients in action. So here's the thing to summarize. As I said, when we sit in blame and in action, nothing ever changes. When we take ownership, any action, any little action, any one degree, any 1% of action can create change. So do the work because inaction is a business killer. So here's an action right now for those of you that are listening or watching this live. I want you to grab your journal or open up your notes on your phone, wherever it is that you make your commitments. And I want you to take a moment to think about the two people that you are going to reach out to today. And what are you going to reach out to them with? The second thing I want you to do is write down what you are going to share this week with your audience, with the people that are already following you, that further reinforces and builds your positioning in your particular industry. And finally, I want you to write down, I want you to get really present with one thing that you know that if you were to stop watching it, listening to, following that person, doing, it would make you feel better versus fueling the negativity right now. And I want you to commit to shutting that negative uh, feeder of your brain out of your world. Because remember, Inaction is a business killer. It's a killer of goals and it's a killer of your dreams. Doing the work, doubling down, taking action and any action will create a shift in your momentum. I'd love to hear what resonated with you this week. Please drop me a message. And if there's anyone in your world that you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, I'd really appreciate it. If you can take a screenshot and send it to them, if you can share the link. And by the way, if you do share anything from today on social media, make sure you tag me uh, because I'd love to give you some love right back. Have a truly fabulous week and I'll be back next week.